For my last demo, I will make use of the Business Logic customization feature. Again, I'll do something simple. How about we prevent files from getting added if they start with a letter A? As always, I'll start by opening Visual Studio and creating a new project. Like with all Vault extensions, this has to be a class library. Next, I add my references. Extensibility framework always gets added. And Autodesk Connectivity Web Services has the interface I need and the event hooks. I've set up my import statement. Now I'll implement the interface. In this case, it's called iWebServiceExtension. There's only one method, onLoad. Like with my other examples, there's a sample in the SDK, but it doesn't look exactly like what I'm showing you in this demo. If you want the exact code from this demo, you can get it from the additional materials section on the AU website. <clears throat> because I added the Web Services DLL, there are some other dependencies I have to load in. Your system web services. and Microsoft Web Services 3. The onload function serves only one purpose. It lets me hook up my event handlers. You do this from the service objects. I want to hook to the add file event, which is in the document service. I want to block an operation, so I subscribe to the Git Restrictions event. I don't need to subscribe to pre or post. In my event handler, two things get passed in. I get a sender, which I can cast to an iWeb service object. This is useful because it has a security header that I can use to make my own calls to the Vault server. The second input contains arguments for that command, in this case add file. Using the second parameter, I can check the file name. I'll just check to see that the file starts with A. If it does, I want to block the operation. I do this by calling the add restriction function.
This function wants a restriction object passed in. So let's create that first. I have to give it the name of the object that I'm complaining about and then a message explaining why I am blocking this operation. Once I add the restriction, the Vault framework will take care of blocking the operation for me and passing it back up as an exception. As far as our code, that's it for the logic. The rest of the steps are just about setting up all of the required information for the API and deploying it to the proper location.
Now let's see this thing in action. I'll start up Vault Explorer. Now I'll add two files, one with the bad name and one with the good name. As you can see, our handler blocked the operation. Here is a message we added to the restriction. So the good file went through, but the bad file was blocked. My code doesn't just affect Vault Explorer. If I had a CAD application on this computer, it would also be blocked from adding files that start with the letter A. And that's it for this demo.